afternoon, my friends from Hemp Engineering. Today, I have a great pleasure interviewing Mr. Michael B Butterstone. He's the uh, candidate for New South Wales for the Legalized Cannabis Party to the Senate. So um, what a great experience and what a great opportunity to have you with us, Mr. Michael. Thank you, Raymond, thank you. The pleasure is mine. Mr. Michael, how did you end up in the cannabis business? I know you have been over 30 years, but uh, I wanted the audience to understand what is your passion? What, what, what is motivating you to be in, you know, uh, giving your life to this yeah. plant? Well, it, it probably started in my early 20s. I was a migraine sufferer, bad migraines. And when I discovered cannabis, I just, it was like something let go in me. It was just like a magic pill for me. And quite a few people I know who are daily cannabis users were like that. When they discovered cannabis, it was like, whoa, where have you been all my life, you know? So, so... I smoked cannabis for quite a while. I discovered it overseas. And then when I came back to Australia and settled down and moved to Nimbin, I discovered this whole scene in Nimbin of people selling cannabis on the street, mostly heroin addicts it was back then, back in the, in the mid eighties. And it was really through that and reading and discovering the source of prohibition and the war on drugs that just inflamed my anger at the whole situation. Because, you know, the more you look and the more you learn about this war on drugs, the more for me, it's really quite simple. It's really a fight over who's gonna get the profit from pain relief. And pain relief is probably the best business on earth. You know, people will give you the shirt off their back if you can take their pain away and make them feel good so the more I looked the more I realized it was nothing to do with what was good for us this war on drugs particularly the the war on cannabis but the whole war on drugs is about big pharma getting control of the medicinal the pain relief market so the propaganda machine that's been operating for nearly a hundred years now has, has really convinced so many people that cannabis is dangerous, turn you into a madman, a rapist, a murderer, whatever, turn you mad. John Howard convinced a lot of people it could turn you mad and put you in a nut house. So it was really living in Nimbin that got my passion going, but it was, it was education. It was me realizing where the war on drugs came from and how it began and how it's being maintained. It is big farmers war and the police are really working for them. And I think they've convinced politicians and the police that they're doing a good thing. They're saving us. And what they've really done, I mean, look at the violence and the gang war in Australia this last week. This is all the war on drugs. You don't hear anyone saying that though, do you? We're just, you know, more gangs, more violence, more killing. It's the biggest business on the planet, illegal drugs, with armaments. And armaments and illegal drugs are mixed up a lot, as you know, in Afghanistan, countries like that. So the more I learned, the more passionate and angry about it I got, really. And then the political party started, and I've run in the election a few times before, really just trying to get the issue on the agenda, trying to get heard trying to get a decent discussion going. And uh, that's proved to be really difficult, especially coming from Nimbin, a long haired, bearded hippie, you know, they don't really respect our view much. And that's in general for illegal drug users, I think, no matter what drug you're using, you're a illegal drug user, you're a criminal, you're not to be listened to, you're not really respected. In fact, it's just people trying to deal with their pain trying to have a good day, trying to feel good. So, yeah, it slowly came from me learning the truth about it. There's one book I actually think is an excellent book called Chasing the Scream 
by Johan Hari. Not that long ago, Johan Hari wrote that book. I recommend it to anyone, Chasing the Scream. Well known, it's in all the bookshops. I want to reinforce your words, which are very uh, 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 passionate on regards to yeah. the marijuana itself. But what I see, humbly speaking, is that most of the co large corporations around Earth have been getting the most benefit out of the prohibition. And when you look at that, all those corporations are basically destroying the planet without any compassion for of any kind. So when we when we look when we look at the cannabis as a, holistically speaking, and um, putting the pain that can, that the marijuana can relieve uh, to millions of souls, and uh, also the hemp. Uh, can also heal that pain to the earth itself by uh, potentially substituting all those products that are being manufactured uh, without any kind of consciousness. The oil and gas industry, the, the, the paper industry that do not have any mercy in cutting trees, um, the food itself, so you name, you name it, you know. Um, it, it is a very large, complex um, issue that we can go on and talk and talk for hours. <laughs> um, 100% agree. 100% agree. And I think people don't realize that only 100 years ago, you know, cannabis was in most of the medicines. Cannabis was the most grown plant on the planet not long ago. And it's been replaced by cotton, which uses so many chemicals. You know, it could stop the wood chipping industry. It can take toxins out of the earth. It produces such a fantastic high protein seed and this unique strong fiber. I mean, it's pretty much the fastest growing plant on earth and, and producing this amazing long, strong, flexible fiber we could be using for everything, building, fire resistant building people are playing with over here now. I mean, I, you know, the, the mind boggle at what we've done by making this plant illegal. We can say that you're an icon in the cannabis uh, fight in Australia. You founded the hemp uh, party. Now you are supporting the legalized cannabis party. Um, what are your plans if you were elected, Mr. Michael? I'd have to hire a lawyer or two probably. It's all lawyers down there, isn't it? My plan, look, we would try to get, if we, if I got elected, it would be such a shock to the system. They'd have to have a look at cannabis, I think. But it's incredibly difficult down there in Canberra to get things on the agenda, as you know. And there's big opposition forces, you know, big pharma. I remember reading the pharmaceutical industries had two lobbyists for every senator in Washington. There is so much money in this business there will be a lot of effort to try to stop it. But yeah, you know, we would be doing, the effort in Canberra would be to educate politicians. Look, let's do something. Let's start making a move on this drug wall. Maybe I'd have to introduce them to an old cookie. <laughs> well, cookies are not bad. <laughs> Last not time bad. I met you, we had a cookie together. <laughs> <laughs> great, great sleeping medicine. They, it'd be better than them using whiskey. They use whiskey to go to sleep, I think. But Michael, the times are shifting. Everything is uh, changing very rapidly. What, uh, what the United States in, in implemented as a global dictatorship to most countries on earth, now they're rapidly dismantling the same equation um, and rapidly injecting billions of dollars to get the, uh, this plant um, approved, um, accepted in the economy itself. Um, that's not a, there, there is no way back. We, the, we cannot stop this. So uh, I, do, I really doubt for the way that I think or I perceive our politicians think in this, in this country, they will simply follow. 
And there is no way that they can hide the fact that this plan is a miracle for everybody and it can uh, positively impact our economy beyond just the fact of the medicine itself. So um, where you elect, where you be elected, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a lot of work to do beyond just the marijuana itself. Yeah, I'll be ready, I'm ready. You know, in Colorado where they've had legal cannabis now for less than 10 years, they've already taken $1 billion in tax for schools and mostly for schools and the health department, I think. That's about the, it's about the population of Sydney, 5 million people. Yes. And, and, and like you say, in America, we have so many examples now of them legalizing cannabis from 1996 in California. It's a long time ago now. And there's no sky has fallen in. In fact, the opposite has happened. Domestic violence is down, suicides are down considerably, deaths from car accidents are down. So many positive statistics are already out there. So there would be a lot to work, work, you know, a lot, a lot of statistics, which is what they want to see, don't they? Yes. For us to use. It's just very hard to get heard. So if someone did get elected, we could get heard. You have a couple of people in Western Australia. I think Dr. Brian Walker is excellent, excellent spokesperson for oh. the cause. And Sophia is an extraordinary fighter. And there are more to come because in this part of the world, we are convinced that we will get more people in this, that we will get more people winning seats. Um, you know, like any other political struggle, it is a one a day by day a fight that we need to win. And people such as yourself, that, are, that you're an icon in this fight, uh, you got a lot to cheer. Having said that, Mr. Michael, what message would you send to the decision makers in this country? They need, they need to educate themselves on the origins of the war on drugs and what it's all about and who benefits. Look, follow the money trail. Let's look at the people like you say, you know, what's happened now, prohibition's been in so long, massive businesses have been created around it, like the jail system, like the court system. All these systems are based on prohibition now. You know, even though we've had legal medical cannabis for some time now, the arrest rate has remained the same. The jails are as full as ever. And, and really, I think what irks me and a lot of people the most is we've argued for a long time, this is good medicine, and they laughed at us. Now they accept it's good medicine, but we're still not allowed to grow our plants. We're not allowed to drive, and they've really given it to virtually small pharmaceutical companies to grow the crops. So all the legal medical cannabis, nothing is organic, nothing's grown outdoors that I know of. It's all sort of produced in laboratories by white coats. And this is a plant that anybody in Australia could be growing in their backyard or on their balcony or in their lounge room in winter. Anybody could grow it and you don't have to get stoned. You could grow CBD, you could grow THC and just massive savings to the health industry and to everyone's good feeling. I think it's gonna take quite a bit of effort, but if we focus on what's happened in America, hard to believe they're not gonna sit up and listen soon because the changes are so obvious over there. Well, it's not just in America or the United States, it's also in many countries in Latin America, many countries in, in Europe. You know, what yes. I believe, Mr. Michael, is that uh, with all due respect to our politician class or sect, I would say, and yeah. when the World War II finished, there were many soldiers that kept fighting because they didn't believe that the war finished. This is what is happening with the Australian politician. They believe that we are still in the, in the war of, on drugs or the, or the war on cannabis, but they don't realize that the war is changing. It's already changed. So by yeah. holding, they're just holding this concept or paradox is just 
They're hurting Australia. Therefore, they don't deserve to be holding any position in the government because they are already dinosaurs. They don't deserve to be there. They just wanna keep holding uh, alcohol industry that is actually destroying uh, our families, are creating all kinds of social problems while, they're, while they should be allowing the, a new and emerging concept of life where cannabis is actually the solution for all. This is my belief. Yeah, I think you're spot on. And I think that they're probably quite scared of cannabis because it is a it is a herb that gets people thinking, it gets them questioning, it gets them looking at new ways of living that might sa help save the planet. There's no doubt cannabis can go a long way to turning around what we're doing to the planet, just like you're saying. And yeah, we're, we're, we're not gonna give up. You know, sometimes Raymond, it reminds me of racism. You know, the poor old black fellas knew all along they were the same, they bleed the same. They're the same as us white fellas. They knew that forever. And yet, you know, they were endlessly getting treated as lesser, murdered, just treated as, as lesser people. And eventually people started to wake up and I take inspiration from that. We ain't gonna give up. We know what the truth is and we just keep going. And the fact that Canberra can grow two plants each, you know, four in a house or two plants for two people is, is quite significant, I think. And yes. no, no big drama there. And in fact, you know how they test the wastewater from all these cities? In the, in the test this year in Canberra, there was a noticeable increase in cannabis use and a decrease in the use of other illegal drugs. Oh, and if they will let cannabis go, people won't use ice. They won't use the hard drugs and powders and pills, which are much easier to hide. Cannabis yes. is the easy but, you know, smelly, bulky. So people who are just trying to have a good time and get get beyond their pain will reach use any drug sometimes, especially alcohol. We just need to give them the choice to use cannabis. It will make a huge difference. And the war on drugs is a war against our own people. I don't know what they think they're doing. Well, um, in regards to the racism, it's not just black people. Don't forget that too, okay? <laughs> yes, all, all people, but white people, we've been the good people at doing it, haven't we? Telling everyone else they're, they're inferior. Yeah, the war on drugs is a, the rich people versus the war people, the poor people, as most wars are, you know, the poor people are copying it. You are absolutely right. In, you know, any kind of racism, anyway, we're slowly waking up that all humans are equal. We need to wake up that so are the plants. And let's get the plant to connect us because this plant connect the beautiful people and beautiful thinking. And as a really good yeah. friend of mine says, you get three drunkards and they start, they start a fight. You get three stoners, we start a party. <laughs> they start laughing. <laughs> Love of right. Christ, Michael, this has been a great interview and I wish you the best um, for our party, which I am a proud, a proud member of it. Um, anything that I can do to help, you know, you, we know each other, right? You were, come on, let's do the best. That we, we, just can keep, we just keep spreading the word, educating everyone on the truth, I think, Raymond. You got that right, Michael. You got that right. Thank you very much, my brother. And let's pray to Jah that everything will be fine. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you very Good much.